Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Moretta from PNW Bettas, and today I'm gonna to be walking you through how I ship my fish. So this morning I have three boxes to pack up from orders on my website. Um, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through my process for packing orders and shipping fish and how I get those boxes out. I always found it really interesting watching people ship fish and that's kind of where I started to learn how to even do this. And so I thought it would be also informative for people to kind of see other people's processes and how they do things because um, everybody does things just a little bit differently. Um, but I also thought it would just be interesting for maybe the people who ordered or the people who are thinking about ordering from my website um, to just kind of see how everything works. So sitting behind me is what I call my beta grow out rack or my grow out system. Um, and it's basically a self circulating system um, that flows water through these little containers. And this is where I keep all the babies that I've bred myself. Um, and it's where I keep them once they become aggressive and I have to remove them from the grow out tank. Um, and this is where they live before they get sold on my website and go to their forever homes. For somebody who's not familiar with breeders or how breeding bettas works, this may seem kind of like a small kind of place for them to live or something that's kind of weird to do. Um, but I do assure you guys that they are definitely well taken care of despite the small space. My jars are heated um, and the system is actually cycled, which is kind of unique. Um, because I flow the water through these jars, they actually go into a sump as well, which is where I heat the water. Um, and it does allow me to cycle the system so I don't have to do as many water changes and I can still maintain really good water parameters. So for shipping fish, I offer um, two different carrier methods. I do USPS and I also do UPS. And I have a few different sizes and types of boxes that I use to ship fish. So I'll go ahead and kind of show you what those look like. For my USPS boxes, I use uh, three different types. Um, the first one being these Priority Mail Express boxes. Um, they are the same size as a medium flat rate, but they're blue and they just say Priority Mail Express. I just like using these for any sort of larger express shipments, um, just because it's labeled as express, so there's no chance the postal worker is, you know, gonna stick it in the wrong pile or whatever. Um, but they're also just bigger and so I can fit more fish in a box this size. Um, and all my boxes are insulated. I buy these little pre-cut styrofoam inserts and so they kind of look like this. Um, so this is one of the larger boxes I'll use for express shipments. The other two types of boxes that I'll use for USPS are priority boxes. So this is one that people use really commonly for fish. It's really um, something you've probably seen before, but these are just these seven by seven by six boxes. Um, and I already have mine all set up. So they already have live fish stickers all over them. Um, but this is a pretty standard size. I can fit up to three fish in a box this size, depending on how they pack, depending on how I pack them. Um, so this is a really good option for smaller orders. Um, and then you can see, I also have the little styrofoam inserts that kind of go into these boxes. Um, but this is kind of what they look like. And the last type of box that I use for USPS is gonna be a medium flat rate box. Um, so this is really good also for larger orders of fish that are shipping priority, um, just because number one, the weight doesn't matter, it's flat rate. So the price is the same, no matter how many fish you put in it. Um, and it's a little bit larger so I can fit more fish and it also has the same insulation. Um, the reason I like using um, both the medium flat rate and the priority box in conjuncture is because they are the same dimensions. So I get to buy the same insulation pieces in the inside and it just kind of cuts down on the number of things I have to purchase. So I like using these ones. Uh, you can use them for just one fish if it's in a really cold months. Uh, if it's in the colder months, you can use them for just one fish. You just, you can pack a lot more insulation in there and you can fit more in the box. Um, but it's also nice when it gets warmer out and you're still needing to use heat packs. Um, it's not quite warm enough to not use a heat pack. You just have more room so the heat pack doesn't heat up that box quite as much. So I also really like these. So this morning I have three boxes going out. We have one priority shipment that is going to be a sorority pack. And so the sorority pack is going to be going into this priority mailbox, um, the medium flat rate. Uh, and then I have two other UPS two day shipments. So those UPS two day shipments, one has two fish and one has one fish and they're gonna be going into these little brown boxes. So one of the first things we need to go do is grab my sorority pack. I know I said that most of the fish that I sell live in these containers, uh, but not my sorority groups. They live all together in a big tank and I separate them out in a breeder box before I ship so I can fast them. So we actually gotta go get those guys before we start packing up some fish. The other thing I need to do besides grabbing my fish is grab the water that I'm gonna be shipping them in because you don't actually wanna be shipping them in their tank water, you're gonna be using clean water. So this right here is my freshwater reservoir. Um, it's basically just a big heated tub of dechlorinated water that's also been aged. So this has been sitting here for a couple days. Um, and I'm just gonna go in and take some water out like that. Um, and this is what I'm gonna use for shipping. 
The other thing that I like to do is I like to ship my fish in water that has tannins in it. So I'm actually gonna be using this thing right here. It is almond leaf powder from Bay Area Bettas. And this is what I use to very easily add tannins to the water that I am shipping in. It basically just looks like this little bag of red powder. Um, and then once you add it to the tank, it just adds tannins. Um, it's made from real almond leaves. It's not just like food coloring or anything. And I've done some little tests with it and it's actually really cool. Uh, it shows the same water parameter kind of things as just using other tannins. So it also does lower my pH and my water hardness. All right, so excuse the mess kind of in this area. This room is kind of a mess, um, but I'm gonna kind of show you how I end up bagging my fish. Uh, everybody does it differently. This is just the way I do it. Um, and I'll show you what I do. Um, so we're gonna start off with some bags. I just like using these clear ones. I have other ones too. Um, and I've been kind of trying out different ones. But right now I've just been really liking the clear ones. So that's what I'm gonna use. And then I just go ahead and I have to pour a little bit of water in the bottom of the bag from my little bit of tannin water. And that right there is all you need for shipping. Now I have my group of females sitting in this little container right here. Um, Kind of hard to tell but there's the female sorority group and essentially i'm just going to scoop into my sorority group with a little ladle uh, and i grab the fish once we have our fish in our bag there she is that's really all the water you need and that looks good so to seal my bags i actually seal them with um, a uh, impulse sealer so basically it does heat sealing so that's what this thing is right here um, and to do it it's actually very simple there's no like catching the air in the bag you really just hold the bag open at the top and then you just fold it over a couple times. Um, and sometimes I actually have to push a little bit of air out of this too, because it ends up getting too much where the bag is like too tall to fit. So sometimes I'll kind of push it down a little bit and then we'll fold it over a couple times and you can see that is enough air. And then I just take it under the um, impulse sealer and I just go ahead and I seal it a few times. So you wanna do it a couple times just in case one of them fails, you don't have water or air leaking out. Um, but it's just, um, I found a really easy way to make a really good seal on the bag. Um, but once you get it in there, you can kind of feel air is nice and trapped. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like. I just do three. Um, and so next, I don't really like shipping my fish like this. This doesn't really look good to me sitting in the bag or sitting in the box. So we are going to tape up this bag and we're also going to double bag. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start just by rolling down the leftover plastic and I'm going to take some tape. This is just normal packing tape and we're going to kind of start taping this up to look more like a normal inflated fish bag. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is double bagging this. So I just take another one of the bags that is the same size and we're just gonna start um, putting the second bag over the first one. Um, it kind of helps to not like over inflate your first bag because then it can be really hard to get the second one on and you don't really wanna force it. You just kind of wanna like gently start putting the second bag over the first one. Um, but you don't wanna like have to like force it in too much because um, that could break your seal on your bag. So you just want to be pretty gentle with it. Um, and I just kind of push the air out at the end. And I kind of just push the bag down. And sometimes it accidentally pops on my tape. So it's not really a big deal. This is just the tape holding the corners down and that's gonna end up being held down anyway. So then once I get the second bag on. I go ahead and heat seal this one as well. And I just get this one really close to the second bag so there's not a lot of like leftover air at the top. So if it does start leaking, it keeps everything really tight close to the first bag. So we seal that and then we just tape it again because I don't like leaving this at the top. So this is kind of what the finished bag with the fish in it looks like. So this is what's gonna go in the box today. All right, now that I have the first one done, there's my little female. We're gonna do the other four for this box and I'm just gonna time lapse it.
Okay, so sometimes I make mistakes with my boxes and I forgot one key thing. When I was measuring out that I could fit five fish in a medium priority box, I had packed them a little bit differently and in smaller bags. So they don't quite fit. Um, this sits over the edge. So we're switching them to a different box. All right, so they fit nice and snug and actually vertically in this box. So I'm just gonna like stick in some packing peanuts and some other packing material. I'm probably gonna throw in some of that um, like fibrous insulation because I have some and it'll just kind of help hold them all in place. Now that these guys are all nice and secure, all five fishies, this is the point where I would add a heat pack if I were using one, but this is going to a location that is nice and warm and does not need a heat pack. Um, and so now we can kind of stick the lid on top. And then I include two things in my packages that are like um, helpful. So uh, one thing is a free Indian almond leaf sample and the other thing is gonna be some unboxing and acclimation directions. So I'm gonna go print those out and get those on top as well. Now that we have everything in the box, I can go ahead and close it up, tape it up, and get it sent off to the post office. We also have a few more to do, so I gotta do those first. So heat sealing definitely isn't the only way to ship fish, so just for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you how I would do bags if I were tying them, because I got three more fish to bag. I'm gonna just kind of skip over the beginning part again. I'm gonna be using these same kind of clear bags, uh, and then using the tannin water, which is this stuff right here, to kind of be my shipping water. Okay, so the other method I sometimes use is tying the bag. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I do that. Um, so I start with just my bag open, there's my fish, and then I just kind of catch the air and I will twist it. And this is what kind of creates that little air pocket. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit more air in this bag just because I have the room in this box. So that's kind of what this looks like. Um, and then I just twist it off really nice and tight. And then I am going to basically just tie a knot. So it does get a little bit tricky to get a good knot. Um, so I like to use a two finger kind of space. This is really hard to do in the way of the camera. And then I'll bring the other end through. And then as I am pulling the knot through, I push the knot down and I basically just use that to catch all of the air in the bag. And then I kind of just wiggle it down a little bit more and I pull it really nice and tight. Uh, and that's what lets me get a nice seal on the bag. Uh, this is a little lopsided, which isn't my favorite, but it'll even out when I get the second bag on. And then what I do is I just hold down um, the knotted part, and this is where I will put on the second one. Um, sometimes it kind of likes to come up, so the other thing you can do is just tape it down. So I just lay like a piece of tape flat down this way, and it will just kind of hold that knot down and hold everything in place. It just does make things a little bit easier sometimes. Uh, and then I'll just go ahead and slip this part over. Um, sometimes it helps if you kind of like pull on the top of the bag just a little bit. You don't wanna break it, but if you just stretch out that top portion a little bit, it won't actually harm the integrity of the bag just because um, that part is the part that's gonna end up being tied and not actually part of where the fish is. Um, so after that, I get the top on, I just kind of push it down into the bag, um, just like that. When that gets air at the bottom, I push the air out, then I can push the bag down further, and I just kind of push out the air at those corners. Uh, now when I do the top, this is kind of the important part. This is where I like to crimp these corners. So when I squeeze my bag and I start twisting, I do it so that those corners get pushed in, and it makes a really round kind of little burrito balloon kind of thing. Uh, and then I'll just twist it up and then we'll go ahead and repeat the same knot tying process, um, trying to get it as tight to the bag as possible because you are to the top of the bag as possible where the air is because you really want to hold all of that air tight into the bag. But that's what the bag looks like after it has been tied. And so this is a tied fish bag ready for shipping. All right, now I'm just gonna turn you down this way to look at yet another pretty messy area of my uh, space with all my cords here. Just kind of ignore that. Um, but we are gonna get this little, this little box all packed up. We got two fish in this order and it is going via USP, or not, sorry, <laughs> not USPS. It's going via UPS two day mail. The first thing I'm gonna put in the box is an Indian almond leaf sample. That's just gonna go at the bottom. I'm gonna start by putting a little plastic bag into the box and this is just going to provide a little barrier in case anything spills. I like to do this with the type of insulation I'm about to put in. 
Um, and so, essentially, what's gonna be going into this box is this cellulose kind of insulation stuff. Um, I've seen people use this before, and I'm, this is actually my first time shipping an order using this stuff, um, but I've had it shipped, I've had fish come to me shipped in this, so uh, I'm gonna kind of put my two fish in and then pack that stuff around. So these guys are actually gonna be laying flat in the box side by side. So actually, sorry, I'm still figuring out the best way to start all of this. So we're gonna start with a layer of the cellulose insulation on the bottom of the box, because these guys, rather than sitting up, are gonna be laying sideways. So we're gonna start with some of this on the bottom, like that. So now our two fish are gonna go sideways into the box. I like this packing method uh, with the, um, with the tying just because I can get my bags a little bit better sized for the box that they're in. So there is the two fish. They fit nice and snug. And we're gonna finish this off by putting a bunch of insulation on top. And so this is gonna kind of wrap them in all of this insulation fluff, which is um, just kind of helps with the heat and keeping, um, it make sure it doesn't get too cold or too hot. This is going to a warmer place, so it doesn't need a heat pack, but you don't want it to overheat from the ambient temperature. So fish are all nice and wrapped up. Now we're gonna take this plastic bag and just kind of fold it. I'm not gonna tie it, but I'm just gonna kind of fold it over so it kind of keeps the fish all nice and snug. Uh, and then this top piece of insulation is going to go on. And then the last thing that I'm gonna include is the um, unboxing and acclimation directions. So I printed those out and those go in my boxes just so people, um, if they've never ordered live fish before off the internet, sometimes the acclimation is, it's different from when you um, just get a fish from the pet store. And so just in case people don't know or they haven't already looked it up, um, it's just helpful to have those directions in the box for them. So that will go fold it up and stuck right on top. Now I'm just gonna kind of close up this box. Um, the other thing, if I'm doing a lot of shipments that I'll do is I'll write on the boxes. So mine are pretty distinct i have two of these boxes going out so i might as well write on it which one this is or which fish are in it sometimes i'll write the person's name um just for their privacy since i'm making a video so sometimes i write the people's names on the box but just for the sake of this video um i'm just i'm not gonna write names i'm just gonna write this is um we have m9 in this box and we also have f02 and that just makes sure that I know, and I generally put it on the inside flap so I can like fold it over and you won't see it when it's in the post office, but it just lets me know which fish this is. Uh, and then we can go get our last box packed. So that is pretty much it. I get everything all packed up. I check the weight on my scale and then we go ahead and we take all of these to the post office. I do take, I take the USPS boxes to the USPS post office and then I take these to the UPS office. So I do have to go to two places don't really mind at all. I just like that people are choosing UPS. Honestly, that's my favorite method. So let's go get these to the post office.